beta decay. We will define both beta minus and beta positive decay and complete nuclear equations involving these two. And then we'll also discuss a couple of applications for them. There are two types of beta decay that we'll be talking about. The first one is when we lose a beta minus, otherwise known as an electron, from the nuclei. Be careful to note that this is coming from the nuclei. It is an, a packet of negative charge from the nuclei, not from the surrounding orbitals. Because you are losing negative charge from the nuclei, you are making the overall nucleus more positive. Or in other words, you are taking a neutron and losing that negative charge, making it a proton, where you also get the negative charge that is ejected and a bit of energy. This occurs in proton deficient nuclei because you change from a neutron to a proton, giving you more protons. So for example, let's look at carbon-14. Carbon-14 often decays into nitrogen-14. In other words, one of the neutrons that was in the carbon nucleus is turned into a proton. This changes your Z, which means that your element does actually change when you do beta decay. And once again, remember, this is coming from the nuclei, not from the surrounding orbitals. This is not the same thing as an ionization energy where you're losing an electron from the orbitals. Let's do an example where we fill in the missing pieces. If we have phosphorus 32 and it undergoes beta decay, you're going to have a 16 as your proton numbers. A couple of ways that you can think about this. In one way, because we are losing that negative charge and a neutron is turning into a proton, our Z will increase by one. You can also think of it as balancing the charges. We have a negative one here, a 15 here, and so to make it balance, it must be that a 16 goes here. Similarly, we need to make sure that we balance our overall mass. Our overall mass doesn't actually change, and so that stays as 32. Let's do another one. Let's finish the equation for the beta minus decay of chlorine 39. We can finish it first by writing the beta particle. This way we can balance all the charges. We can then balance our mass and our protons. Because our mass is 39 over here, it must be 39 over here. Mass number for a beta minus particle is zero, and so this stays the same. Our charge, or our protons, go up to 18. Because we have 17 over here, we minus one from the emitted particle, leaving us with a proton number of 18. We look on the periodic table and find that this is argon. Let's talk about one of the common usages for beta decay. Strontium-90 undergoes beta decay. It turns out that strontium, being right underneath calcium on the periodic table, tends to seek bone for the same reason that calcium does. What this means is that if we inject radioactive strontium, it will be drawn into the bones. This means that it will provide targeted radiation on anything that is a bone, especially any part of the bone that is growing quickly, which one of the hallmarks of cancer is that it grows very quickly. As with most treatments for cancer, we are simply trying to kill the fast-growing cells faster than we kill the human that is surrounding the very fast-growing cells. It also turns out that this aspect of strontium-90 played a pretty important worldwide effect on our nuclear policy. We found that, in, that children who were born in the 1960s had 50 times higher level of strontium-90 than children born before that. And this was because of all the nuclear testing that was happening. We were getting, we had finally gotten the nuclear bomb as were other countries, and we were developing these and testing these and overall increasing the amount of radiation in our environment. And so children were picking this up and because children's teeth have lots of calcium in them, and therefore we'll, we're also picking up the strontium-90 at faster levels. We were able to use the children's teeth being sent in in the mail 
to test the radiation that was being uptaken by humans. And it was found to be very much higher than what we would hope for. And so they've actually used that as part of their reasoning for banning nuclear testing. Now let's talk about the other kind of beta decay, beta positive or positron decay. This occurs when the neutron to proton ratio is too small, or in other words, in neutron deficient nuclei. A proton is a turned into a neutron and a positron. The positron is ejected, and then the proton, which is now a neutron, it stays in the nucleus. So for an example, let's look at potassium-40. In this case, we can see that our Z goes down instead of up because we're emitting a positive charge. So overall, we're making the nuclei less positive. We have less protons. You can also, for the sake of completing equations, just note that this is a one plus, so the one plus the 19, or the 18, must add to be 19. Our charges, our mass unit stays the same. The mass number is zero. Well, let's look at a couple of places that we use positron decay. You may have heard of PET scans or positron emission tomography scans. These use beta positive decay. Now, because the radioactive nuclei have a very short half-life, or in other words, they aren't actually radioactive for very long before they decay, PET scanning is actually quite difficult to do. You have to be right near a synchrotron who can make the radioactive nuclei, transport it very quickly to the facility, and then quickly get a PET scan. That's why these aren't used as often as, let's say, an MRI or CT scan, which can create the x-rays on the spot. And you can do very cool things with this. For instance, you can measure activities in the brain, like we have over here, and actually see the difference between a brain of a depressed person versus a not depressed person, and get an idea of where the blood flow, where the activity is. Or for instance here, we have an example where someone is doing a language task. And in one case, this is something that they have practiced over and over again, and in the other, they're learning. And so you can see the difference between recalling things that you already know how to do and learning new things as, in terms of how your brain actually treats it. We can also use PET scans for less academic and more treatment-oriented things, which is to look at places in the human body and see things that aren't normal. So for instance, a normal PET scan, you can see here, where you can see dark spots. For instance, here where the heart is, you have increased blood flow. You can see that. But in cases where things look abnormal, it won't compare to a normal PET scan. And here, you can see there's lots of cancer spots, things that wouldn't normally be there. And the PET scan is able to pick that up based on how the body uptakes the material. So in review, beta minus decay occurs when a negative charge is ejected from the nuclei. Overall, this makes the nuclei more positive. Beta plus decay is when a positive charge is ejected from the nucleus, overall making the nucleus less positive. And we've learned how to complete nuclear equations involving beta plus and beta minus for completing reactions involving beta decay. Remember that there are several ways to write this, and you have the option of whether you want to write the subscript and superscript. I would suggest writing it. It makes balancing the equations quicker and easier and less likely for mistakes, but it is up to you.